Welcome to Flow Tricks. There should be some fire here. It should be going with the Flow Tricks logo appearing. Apparently, it's not working. So, welcome to Flow Tricks. This is Ken. Uh, first, I want to start by thanking the sponsors Dark Monk and Flow Toys. Now, Dark Monk is uh, giving away a pair of fire chucks, which I will be giving away at the end of this discussion. Uh, let me know if you're not able to hear me. Um, I want to showcase, hold on one second, and then Flow Toys, of course, too, makes awesome LED chucks. What's up? It's Ken. I am just getting everything set up. You know, every time I start this, let me just make sure. Boom. Okay. Every time I start these live streams, it's always like that odd icebreaker. I was actually on my phone surfing Facebook and I looked up and I was like, oh, 30 seconds. <sighs> but I don't know why the explosion didn't come off. That that should have, you should have seen the Fire Flow Tricks logo and it should have like been awesome and really inspiring. <laughs> Anyways, I um, want to give some shout outs here. What's up, Adam? What's up, Mohammed? What's up, Lugo? And Tulio. How's it going? I see all your posts up there. It's pretty awesome. We've got a few things I want to talk about today before we go to the Patreon donation giveaway. Um, first, I want to talk about Dark Monk. Uh, Dark Monk is should be almost done with the official Flow Trucks uh, nunchucks. I'm really excited about it. He sent me many renditions. Hey, there's like a big microphone in the way. Boom. <laughs> That's my new mic, by the way. Isn't it just huge? Uh, I did that so like you can actually hear me better, but the Dark Monk Chucks, this has probably been what, like the seventh or eighth rendition, maybe 12, I don't even know. But every time he would send it back, I'd be like, we talk about it, well, the balance is a little bit off, or maybe maybe the ends need to be a little bit more tethered off, or something of that nature. Um, he should be just about done with it. He, I just spoke with him, and he said probably next week they're gonna do a short run of nunchucks so we'll see about that that's gonna be pretty awesome though also the fire nunchucks i was gonna go over some of the fire nunchucks these are dark monk fire nunchucks i spin them in shows they're really awesome super lightweight they've got padding on the bottom you've got a nice rope even if you don't spin fire because i know not everyone's like some people are intimidated of fire and that's perfectly okay uh even if they even if you don't spin fire just the kevlar ends well these are charred uh, act as padding. So even if you don't necessarily spin fire nunchucks, that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't buy a fire nunchuck. Because <laughs> um, they can also make great training chucks just because you have that Kevlar end. So boosh, if you hit yourself, it's still, you're just being hit with padding. Um, the nice thing about the training chucks is they kind of simulate that with the cushion end as well. As you can see, it's like half foam and half nunchuck. And it's like this really cool hybrid that's super lightweight as well. Anyways, can y'all hear me okay, by the way? I just want to make sure. Am I coming in loud and clear? Last time we had some audio issues. Um, so if I'm not, let's see here, live. Give me just one more minute here. If someone can answer, if they can hear me okay too, that would be awesome. YouTube live. I just want to check and make sure there's some sound coming. Anyways, hope you guys have been doing awesome. Oh my gosh, it's like, oh, here we go, okay. I'm just streaming my own stream just so I can see if there's sound, so give me a second here. Yes, awesome, okay. <laughs> hey, thanks, Adam. I'm glad you guys can hear. Uh, last time I had a big issue with sound, so I got this microphone and I changed the whole setup 30 minutes before this stream, and I wasn't sure if, if something was gonna go awry. Um, Outside of that, I uh, just wanted to announce, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but uh, Storyful, which is uh, a publishing company, uh, got a hold of me because of uh, the ABCs of Nunchuck video. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, but Storyful, basically, they, they post viral videos as well as they work with different news agencies and TV shows. Maybe it'll get on something, maybe not. I'm sure they'll pitch it, which is pretty cool, but you might be able to see the ABCs of Nunchuck video somewhere awesome down the line, six months. I don't know. I'll let you guys know if anything happens with it. But if you haven't seen the ABCs of Nunchucks, check it out. It's pretty cool. It took me a while to do. I did 26. I went from A to Z, all the all different kinds of techniques and ideas that you can do with nunchucks. Some of the letters were really hard, so I just kind of had to make it up. Ah, all right. A couple more shout outs here. Hoy Fitch, what's up? Uh, Vignac, wait, Vignac, how's it going? And Nicholas, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, well, uh, with that said, let me just see what else. 
Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the website too. And then after that, while I'm talking about the website, please feel free to ask questions. And then when I'm done with the website, I'll go over and take a look and see. Uh, see. But I really wanted to show, show you guys this website because let me see. Let's go to the internet. Boom. This is what the Flowtrix website looks like. And if you're not on the website, it's awesome because it's still just we're still in beta but f you can talk about nunchucks you can talk about double chucks you can talk about staff you can create your own profile but basically you can go over here and you can post your training with chucks and uh, as you can see I I visit this frequently so I'll respond and I'll watch your videos this is the very last video that someone posted in the nunchuck forum I figured we kind of show this off He's doing awesome. He does a lot of, what I like about what uh, Flow May just does is he does a lot of variety in his flow. But this is our little home. The Flow Tricks website is our little home. So definitely be sure to check it out. It's not just for the Patreon donors. This is for everyone. This is a public thing. I spent two years working on this. So if you ever, ever want to like continue talking about Chucks besides on Thursdays or just whenever I release a video, come on down come to the flow tricks website i mean i've spent two years trying to make it awesome and even that uh as you join you have your own profile so let me see so this is my profile right here um i'm working on this so you see there's a little there's a little thing but eventually there'll be badges so you can win awards and badges across the sides we'll eventually do belt testing as well there's gonna be some sick stuff here it's gonna be pretty awesome we also have like a flow journal so if you want to just talk about your experiences you can just go right in your journal over here and you can just basically it gives you inspirations at the top like today I had an amazing time when I was so you give it a title you type in your thoughts about how your training session went you can post a video if you have it on YouTube you can talk about how you feel and you can rate your day you can throw a, a picture and submit it and it goes into this collage of everyone else's uh, everyone else's so like if we just go to the flow journal you see everyone else's entries are mixed in with it too as you can see you'll see a lot of different posts i just i really think it'd be amazing to get more people involved we're still in beta so i'm still running you know tests and trying to fix everything and but it's really turning out to be an awesome website and i'm really excited about that uh with that said oh i want to show one more thing this thing took forever but this is pretty cool when you gotta learn um now this is this is kind of this is more of a Patreon exclusive, so uh, five dollars or more donors, do, I can't even talk, donors will have access to this, but this is awesome because, for instance, if I click on catch, it goes through my YouTube videos. We had a team of people go through my YouTube videos. These are all the different kinds of catches that I've talked about at one point or another in my YouTube series. Um, I could also go to, like, combos. So these are combos that I've talked to in my YouTube series so it's really easy to find things so like say you want to find combos but you want to kind of find intermediate combos all I have to do is click on both of those and I have all these different kinds of intermediate combos and then from there I can click on one so let's just say axe kick this is an axe kick combo it'll bring it up and when I hit play the cool thing that I really like about this is it fast forwards oh <laughs> the axe kicks in the very beginning it fast forwards to the exact point where it's being taught and you can flip it and we can also loop it so I can hit I and then O and then it'll it'll keep it so I is the start point O is the end point and as you can see it just endlessly loops the thing so it's pretty cool and then I also have it where you can type notes you know like be sure to kick higher this is just for you no one else will be able to see it you can submit it and then I just put down like how good are you with this technique so you can actually rate how good you are so for instance maybe you just rock at it if you click on level four as you can see, the graphic will change because you're a level four. You're awesome. It'll also say you can do this move great and also add embellishments. So uh, if you ever revisit it, you'll remind yourself, oh, yeah, I rock at this move. That's right. And it'll also remind you all the notes that you took. I didn't hit submit, so it didn't work, but that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> With that said, I just I really wanted to, to show you guys this website because flowtricks.net is like my pride and joy. I've I could have done so many videos and so much training, but I've spent hundreds of hours trying to build this killer website so we could actually have a home outside of YouTube and outside of Facebook, one that won't disappear and one that just kind of grows with us. Okay, I am going to come back here, back to chat. All right, you guys, I'm just about done here, minus the Patreon, uh, or minus the Fire Nunchuck giveaway. So now what I'm going to do, if you have questions, be sure to ask right now. Uh, ask away, and I'll, I'll go through it in a queue. Um, 
And yeah, and then we'll go ahead and go to the giveaway. This is kind of a Q&A, I guess, right now. So I'm going to start reading off and seeing what we can talk about here. Let's see. So I just wanted to jump in and thank you for your nunchuck tutorials. Practiced a lot last summer. Awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It was really funny. Uh, I was just helping my uh, girlfriend uh, pick up something from, uh, from a friend's house, and he just happened to have a pair of nunchucks sitting around. And... Uh, I mean, he knew a little bit, I think, but he didn't realize. And I'm, he's like, I was like, can I see that? And I was like, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> it's really cool when you just, I, maybe every musician feels this way. I don't know if you guys feel this way, but you ever just like go to someone's house and you just see a pair of nunchucks just like hanging out like over in the corner. Maybe, you know, they played with it a couple times and you're just like, hmm. Hmm. Or you ever do that at a martial arts studio too? You watch them do their nunchucks with their over-the-shoulder passes, and then the kicks. It's so cool. No, no, not all of them are like that. I just mean like, and then just like, oh man, I just would love to just go in there and just be like, that might be the showmanship in me though. Okay. Uh, Lionel says, how have your shows and performances been going lately? You should record and upload performances. I like seeing the audience's reactions. I have been blasted with shows in January. This is the crazy thing about shows. January, every Thursday I had a show and we had some incredible ones. Um, I live in a, like I live in Nebraska, so we don't really get a lot of circus shows, but uh, in January I feel like it's a turning point. I've, we got a, quite a few corporate shows. Um, a lot of people got to see fire nunchucks and a sear wheel and people hanging from the ceilings. And uh, it's really cool. If you're ever interested in starting your own thing, the hardest part about it is just getting the momentum going. I mean, it's just like flow tricks. Like when I first started here, I started with one subscriber, you know? I started with one person watching my video and it just like grew from there. Um, I feel the same way with performances. But February is really, really dead right now. I have no gigs, which means I've just been focusing on working on the website almost this whole time. And that's why I'm, that's all I'm talking about is because that's all I've been working on. I put in probably about 20 hours in the last two days, just like 10 hours, just typing away. Um, but I mean, performances, they go up and down. Come summertime, performances will be big. Uh, that's one reason why I like fire nunchucks is because especially in the summertime, it's like, it's, it's not hard to, it's not hard to find a group that spins fire or that, that, you know, may want to, to use a fire nunchuck to some degree or another, just because it's such a unique act. So when you're talking about selling entertainment, I feel like fire nunchucks are pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Mites. Hi, Ken Hill. I'm starting to love nunchucks because I watch your vids. Awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry if I pronounce your, if I pronounce your name wrong. No, that's, that's great. Um, that's really all I want to do is I just want to spread I just want to spread like this knowledge because I feel like nunchucks, there's so many things you can do with it. It is the only prop that you can use, not a staff, not a sword. It's the only prop that's illegal in like half the world, right? <laughs> that you can use to dazzle and that you can also use to as valid self-defense on top of that. But the legalities of nunchucks is just crazy. Like it's just absolutely crazy. In some states here, it's as bad as having a sawed off shotgun. So like, we have a mysterious, crazy prop at our hands uh, that very few people understand. And so it's pretty awesome to be at the cusp of that and like trying to change the tides. All right, Vinyak says, hello, I just wanted to let you know the advice about teaching you gave me on your last stream helped me so much. Just today, my teacher said he wants me to teach more awesome. Dude, that's awesome. I'm really excited about that. We need more teachers. We need more people like showcasing this and, and just yeah, changing the way that nunchucks are, are spun, man. That's that's great. Um, can I ask you guys something, though? Does anyone have any questions for me? Questions about double nunchucks, single nunchucks, staff, double staff, even the big wheel that I spin around in? I can, I can answer that. Poi, um, bugang, I got all kinds of things. Martial arts, fighting, I've done all of it. So, I mean, you just let me know uh, if you have any questions. Otherwise, I think I'll give a quick little tutorial about fire chucks, just because it's fire chuck, you know, I'm giving it away. I'm going to do a little tutorial with fire chucks to kind of help you all out. And if there's no more questions, I'll check after we're done. If there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and go to the giveaway. Whoosh. All right. I'm going to move this microphone so you can hear. Uh, let's actually connect this so I can read what you all are saying. Give me just a second here. Hi, Mohammed. Okay. Whoosh. So 
So today I wanted to go over fire nunchucks. Now I rarely ever teach fire nunchucks and let me tell you why. The big reason that I don't want to teach people about fire nunchucks is because I don't want a bunch of people going home, grabbing chucks. I've had people ask if they could wrap socks around the bottoms of their chucks and light them on fire and that is absolutely dangerous because if you're spinning chucks and they're not secure, they're gonna, you're going to have this fireball flying somewhere. So I just don't want to be responsible for that. So the very first thing I can always have to say before anything else with fire chucks is always find a local fire troop to help you because you need to understand fire safety before anything. You need to wear the right clothes before anything. You need to make sure that there's a fire extinguisher and a fire towel and there's someone watching you. So if you do start on fire, because sometimes you might be spinning a chuck especially, and if you do a bounce here, you might start your back on fire, but you won't be able to see it until it's too big. So that's why you always should have someone that understands safety, maybe stand by a swimming pool, whatever you can just to be extra safe because I don't want anyone to get hurt doing this. I just want everyone to be awesome. Uh, by the way, how is that working? Hopefully, hopefully the sound is, I'm going to turn up the sound a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Okay. And so the couple tips I want to give with fire nunchucks is very simple. I, I've teach this all the time. It's like when you first get fire nunchucks, the thing that you have to remember, if you're going to light it on fire is that the fire is going to be huge in the beginning. Not only is it going to be huge, it's going to be soaking wet with fuel. Now, a lot of times people spin off their excess fuel, but you'll see a lot of in a lot of my videos, I'll stand here and it'll be, it'll still have a lot of fuel. So when I light it, it's dripping fuel because the ground is like concrete, like what I'm standing on. And then what I'll do is I'll swing. It's kind of like, you know, how I just taught the upward stall, how we do the upward stall. And I said, that was my very last video. And I was talking about the golf swing flick. It's the same thing. We have, we have the, we have the chucks in both hands. We light the tip, whoosh, we stand up high. And as we swing down, the moment we almost hit the bottom of it, we flick. And what it does is it flicks out all the excess, uh, all the excess fuel onto the ground, whoosh, which will leave a line of fire on the ground. So if we can go flick, flick, all of a sudden, there's going to be this line of fire next to me whoosh, and I've also spun it off. Now, once you get to that point, uh, your nunchucks are going to have a lot of fire, maybe even fire that goes all the way up to here. Meaning if you held the chuck like this still ever, if you ever hold it still, the flame's probably going to be like past your hand, melting your hand. Your hand's going to turn to glue. It's going to get stuck in your chuck and then you'll have a nunchuck stuck in your hand forever. So what you're going to always do is keep it in motion. So especially when you first start out, Figure eight wrist rolls, figure eight wrist rolls, figure eight wrist rolls, and some rips. If you can do figure eight wrist rolls, especially in the beginning, what you're trying to do is keep it in motion so that way the chucks have a tail. And as long as the tail of fire is, uh, is moving, it's not going to go up. So in other words, if I'm holding the chuck here, it's going to burn my arm. It's going to burn my fingers here because it's not in motion. But if we keep it in motion, which is why figure eight wrist rolls work so well, it's going to pull the fire in a circle, in the same circle that you see it moving in. So the trick to doing fire nunchucks is lots of figure eight wrist rolls in the beginning. Later you can figure out and you can start working all these extra little tricks, but it truly is keeping it fast and furious, especially in the beginning. Um, once you acquaint yourself with the fire, you'll realize the first minute and a half are the most intense. So that's the time you need to be the fastest. Once you get past about a minute, a minute and a half, you can slow it down a little bit. You can start doing, you can start doing tricks, but there are definitely some no-nos about fire chucks. Another no-no with fire chucks is the moment you light it, it's dripping with fuel. So don't do bounces. For instance, if I start doing bounces, what's going to happen is if I bounce here, as it hits, it's going to spray flaming fuel upwards. Might hit my eye, might hit my face. So you might, you could light your face on fire by just doing a bounce. So the, the idea is you wait about a minute to a minute and a half. The fire is going to go down and you're going to feel the difference in the flame. That's when you know you can start doing bounces, but don't do it in the beginning because you will transfer the fire onto your body or onto the floor or onto someone else because it's sopping wet. So, uh, it's just something that people don't think about until they do it and then I'll, you know, it might be a little too late. <laughs> so just wanted to give you guys a couple of tips. Uh, the most important thing though is if anyone's interested in fire chucks, you don't have to be the most technical, but you probably should be able to spin figure eight wrist rolls very fast and you should find a fire troop, someone that can guide you, someone that can watch you. Experienced fire safeties are so important. I cannot stress that enough. Do not ever do this alone at home, especially when you first begin but hopefully no. 
because having that extra person is always good. Even after about eight years of fire dancing, I still, like, I had an issue that happened, but it was seven years in that this issue happened. It wasn't like four years in, it wasn't even two, it was hundreds of spins later some issue happened. So anyways, I'm gonna start reading some questions now. And then after that, I think we'll go to the giveaway. We'll do the little, I have a wheel ready to go so we can give a fire nunchuck away. I'm not giving away this fire nunchuck, by the way. I just wanted to use this as an example. They're gonna get a fresh, brand new fire nunchuck from Dark Monk. Okay, let me see. What's your background in martial arts and what martial arts moves do you like to incorporate with nunchucks? Uh, so my background in martial arts, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm 40 years old. Uh, I started martial arts when I was about 12. My dad studied Tai Chi Chuan, a military form. It's a beautiful way to basically snap people's arms and necks is the way I always saw it. Um, so I studied that a while, a couple of years with my dad, and then I, studied, I went to a dojo and they had 18 instructors, and each instructor taught a different, a different art. It was amazing. It was open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. You could come in anytime. So basically, it was crazy. You'd spend 50 bucks a month, and you had 12 hours of classes every day. Um, I, pr I practically lived there for a couple of years. I was there for like eight hours a day, you know, just because I was, was so into the martial arts. Uh, so I've, I have, I'm kind of a mutt of different styles, but I really like Kali and Ninjutsu. I feel like those really worked well for me. I like Jujutsu. I'm definitely not a cage fighter, but it helps me when I do spar with people that know Jujutsu because I can do illegal moves because I train other arts like Ninjutsu where you're breaking fingers and wrists, but I also understand the guard and I understand like the simple, the simple Jujutsu stuff. I find it's really fun. I also find it's a very opposite of flow. Like I feel like with flow, you're trying to create, you're trying to create a pattern of movement. Whereas with martial arts, you're trying to fake them out. You're trying to create this pattern so you can fake them out and then you disrupt that pattern. And that's usually how you can get in and hit someone really well. Uh, let me see, what else do we have here? How to move the fan. The fan, I'm not sure what the fan, uh, what fan you're talking about? How to move the fan. I don't have a fan around here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Um, how to move the fan? Let me see. If you wanna uh, elaborate on that, if you wanna tell me what you mean by how to move the fan, that would be awesome. I, I move my fans online. <laughs> <laughs> awesome videos. I feel they might be moved by it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I, it looks like our Q&A is just about done. Does anyone have any other questions for me? Uh, be sure to ask now. Otherwise, we will give away the fire chuck. By the way, how are you guys liking, how are you guys doing with these stalls? I was just teaching these, and then we just did the stall flick too, which is the upward stall, flick it back and catch it. Are, were you guys able to get that okay? Funny Blunt Truth Podcast. What's up, Ken? Cool channel, man. Fellow nunchuck enthusiast, but you're way better. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's when it's your living, it's like, uh, you know, I'm a full-time performer, so like when your living counts on it, you just got to do it a lot, but... Yeah, <laughs> it's all so relative. Let's see, Lionel says, are there any weapons you want to learn that you haven't gotten a chance to try yet? Um, weapons, definitely. I, I would love to get better at rope dart. I, I just, I like the way it looks aesthetically. I think it looks killer. Um, any other weapons I want to try? Probably Kusari, uh, Kusari Gamma, you know? It's like a sickle with a long chain. I think that would be really fun. I think it'd be cool to be really good at the blowgun too. Just the dart, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's not really flow though, but I think that'd be pretty fun. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm thinking of really horrible practical jokes that. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, that would be fun. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No. Uh, I hope that everyone learns from this channel and they share it. And so by the time I'm a super old man, I'll be able to see like all these like next gen ninja chuckers just going crazy. <laughs> that would be really nice. I don't know. You know, it's like everyone has their thing they got to do, and that's my thing. I want to try to make a difference in the world by teaching people, not necessarily, it's more than just spinning nunchucks. It's just how to, bam, express yourself and get out there in the crowd and really, 
and really just you know find an outlet for all those things you hold inside. So I really feel like a lot of people I've helped a lot of people with that and that's like I don't know to me that is like my drive. That's my goal. Okay, I'm gonna come back here. Oops. <laughs> Hello, I'm a talking microphone. <laughs> Welcome to Flow Tricks. All right, sorry. Bad jokes. Um, oh, good. Okay, we have a question. Okay, okay. I'm going to come back. I was just about to, to, to finish up, but I like questions, so I'm going to turn it back out here, and then I'm going to go through this. So the question is, I can't figure out the chicken wing rebound. Can you help? Yeah, sure. So the chicken wing rebound, it's really a spacing thing. You're trying to get the chuck right in the middle of your arm, psh, like this. If you can get it nice and to sink nice and neat, hopefully your chuck, now this also depends on the size of your chuck, because if you have a short string, you might not be able to pull this off. For instance, if my string was half this length, it would be kind of hanging, it would be hanging too much to be able to chicken wing. So you need to have enough space to where the chuck generally hides down. But you can kind of feel it just by going like this. It's just like a chain unwinder, except we're doing it with our elbow, okay? So here, and then all we're doing is going back and forth. Now, as, as you notice, my hand kind of comes up and we're trying to get the chuck not to go behind it because it'll release, it'll cause it to fly out of my hand. So we're using our arm as a bar to hold it up this way. So the, the hand kind of stops the chuck from flying off position. And then as I swing my elbow up, it causes the other side. So now it's gonna come, it's the, the top chuck's gonna go over to the back of my hand, and this is gonna roll down by the armpit, or by the tricep. And in that way, we have like this rebound motion. Now a way to catch it, I almost always catch it underhand. It's really hard to catch it overhand, like over the top. You might be able to if you can reach your hand over, but then you're just like in this really awkward grip. So usually, uh, and again, you know, a lot of this depends on your chuck, but I'll, I'll grab it right there. So as I'm doing my chicken wing, it grabs, and then I use my arm to pop it out like that. So again, we're in here, we're doing our chicken wing or whatever. I'm doing this kind of slow so you can kind of see whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. As it comes up, my hand grabs it, I'm gonna grab it nice and firm, and then when my elbow pops it up, whoosh, it sets it back in motion. And from there, it's almost like a rotor pass. We're kind of doing the same thing, except we're doing it with an underhand grip. So we're just gonna try to set it back in motion so we can catch it again. So hopefully that helps. Chicken wings, I mean, as long as you can get it to securely go under the arm, whew, as long as you can get that rope to get right on the arm, and you pinch it in and you start swinging it around, that's why we call it chicken wing, because look like a chicken, then you should be able to get it off. It does take a little bit of practice, so don't feel too discouraged. Just remember, it's all about, it's just like, it's just like this move, except for it's over your elbow. You gotta use your arm, though, to block it, otherwise it'll fly off, it'll fly off. Okay, you forgot the second part of my question. What martial arts do you like to incorporate with nunchucks? Um, I mean, I like to do a lot of kicks, so whoosh, like that or we'll do, um, ah. now the thing is, like for instance, a round kick, if I'm standing here, yeah, you know, that round kick is gonna be different than this, than this kind of round kick. And the reason for that is because when your arm has to go under your leg, you can't generate the same kind of power as when, you're, when you can put your hips into it and just shoot it out, whoosh, whoosh, you know? So uh, you do have to do modifications. Um, when, I, when I do my collie, or when I do my sticky hands, a lot of that comes from hyperstyle. So when we would do the rolling hands, it kind of has the same, same feel. There's a lot of different varieties. A lot of them has to do with kicks and definitely the stance. Uh, I feel like martial artists really capitalize on using their body. So whereas a flow artist might swing their chuck and not even think about it, a, mar a martial artist, will be able to throw their whole body into it because they've trained, even with their punches, they don't just punch with their arm, they punch with their feet, starts in their toes and rips all the way up into their fist. So it's, I feel like everything, everything is modified when you're a martial artist that picks up 
something and you want to do it for flow because from the get-go you know like the importance of your stance and of being able to use your whole body's energy and it just it just has that extra sharp extra crisp uh, extra control on top of that so that's kind of where it is it may not always be specific techniques but it's always present in your energy and style and uh, I think I really highly advise anyone that learns martial arts to see how they can make it work. I don't know how you can make it work with jujitsu though, unless you want to lay on the ground and try to choke your chuck out. <laughs> yeah. Ah, let's see. I am going to make a YouTube channel based on nunchaku because you inspired me to do nunchucks. Do that, that would be awesome. Uh, send me the link. Ah, love your work. Hope to see you come to India one day. Yeah, no, I would love to come to India. I've had so many people tell me India is the place to go. Sorry you can't see me right now. I'm just like straight off to the side. I would go to the chat, but I feel like uh, I want to answer questions here. How the nunchuck turns on the finger. I mean, getting the nunchuck to turn on the finger is kind of like getting the nunchuck to turn on the wrist, wrist but it's a lot more, it's a lot more it's very small, it's very tiny. So when we're working with nunchuck finger spins, I mean, there's different kinds. I mean, we have the wheel, and this is rotating on the finger, but then we also have like these, these digit rolls that happen where we can exchange fingers and have it roll through. The idea of any of it is first, make it very smooth. You're always thinking smooth. And second, most people make the mistake of going too fast with all of it, because you really have to go with the speed of the chuck you have to figure out how it's rotating and you, you can't go faster or slower, but you have to just kind of merge with the speed of it. It'd be kind of like trying to run into a car that's already driving. So if the car is going seven miles an hour, you don't want to run 10 and you don't want to run three. You have to run at the same speed. And it's kind of the same thing. So like, for instance, this, this finger spin right here, uh, the way to get it to work is if I'm holding it in the upper hand, so I'm overhand grip, I bounce it off of my deltoid and then I kind of shoot it sideways like this, right? Now what's gonna happen is, as it's coming across, my finger is gonna just point straight up, like this, so finger points straight up. It should wrap around like that. So here, finger points straight up, wrap. Finger points straight up, wrap. Once you get that wrap to happen, now the trick is, once this wrap starts to happen, you're gonna to have to open up your hand and let the chuck go. The momentum of the spin, the harder it comes towards you, like the harder the nunchuck comes your direction, the faster the other side will be able to catch up. So if I do it nice and slow, it's gonna be kind of limp, but if I do it fast, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll be nice and straight. Going with horizontal, of course. So the trick is though, no matter how fast or slow that it goes, you're basically holding your finger and letting it run its course, your finger will slowly go to the other side, and the moment you feel it touch the other side, you're gonna close your thumb, so. It's rolling, it's rolling, and the moment I felt it, I closed my thumb here. And this allows me to do an underhand grip. It does take a lot of practice. Um, my favorite are always the horizontals. And you can tell when you have a good one versus a bad one because both sides should be kind of even. And the only way to get them to go evenly, <laughs> see not all of mine are perfect yet. The only way to get them evenly is to make sure that you're guiding it at the same speed. Not too fast, not too slow. Now that's the same with the wheel too. The thing is, is when someone feels a wheel, sometimes they think they have to go really fast, right? But the faster you go, the faster the wheel goes, the faster your finger's gonna have to go to keep up until you're going, until the wheel goes so fast you can't control it. So it's the same with the wheel. I'll go over this one really quick too. So it's almost like you can touch your nose. My right hand can touch my nose, it's on this side. And this one points away, okay? So we have, one finger on one side of the chuck and one finger on the other side of the chuck. One finger here, one finger here. From here, it's almost like we touch our nose and we push down, whoosh, okay? So it's here, we push down, and then what we're doing, not necessarily a circle, but more like a long oval like that. And just see if you can just get it going. The idea is that you go as slow as possible when you first start without it stopping. You wanna keep it nice and slow because people tend to get in the habit of when the wheel starts to happen, they speed up, but then what happens is, is once the force is faster, you have to go faster. So the, the faster you go, the more you're gonna like make it go out of control. So really what I wanna say is be nice and relaxed about it, essentially. Don't try to go too fast because it will go fast with you and then all of a sudden, 
But this jet can go as fast as it wants to go, and eventually it'll go out of control. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Adam. The sound effects you make are honestly my favorite parts of your video. Well, thank you. You know, maybe I should do a tutorial series on how to make good sound effects. <laughs> have you ever thought about giving up flow arts? And if you have, how did you overcome it? It's really inspiring that you've been doing it for so long and don't stop, man. Yeah, man, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I've definitely thought about giving up many times. It's not an easy industry to be in. Um, it's like you spin nunchucks and you're like, dude, this is like my passion. This is what I want to do. But then you realize that the world's not ready for it yet. I mean, it's still illegal in half the, half the, like half the world. I found that um, the hardest part was just being able to make enough money to survive doing this. Um, but at the same time, if I didn't try, if I didn't try, then what would happen was I'd have to work a full-time job and I'd only have like a couple hours a day to work on it. And with those couple hours, I mean, like I said, I spent 20 hours on the website in the last two days. That's probably about accurate. That would take weeks and weeks and weeks where I was able to get it done in two days. So as you can imagine, like being able to actually make a dent with everything, it really like, it's really a leap of faith. And when you do that, like, You'll, you may spend like a whole month with barely any work. You're barely scrapping by. And then next month might be like you get more work. You really have to wear a lot of hats and it's, it's, it's definitely a learning experience. But the nice thing is, is now that I've gone through it, I can help others get through it a lot easier than I did. But no matter what it is, it requires a lot of tenacity, even in, in, this, in this state, in this day and age. But maybe, maybe 20 years from now, maybe it will change. Just like if you think about yoga, like yoga is everywhere. Like people can be yoga teachers now and, and they can make a living doing yoga. And I feel the same way about chucks and spinning other things too. It's like we should be able to make a living doing this and not struggle for it. There's very few people in this world that's able to make a living doing flow arts. Very few, very few, very small amount. And that's part of my goal is to help expand it and make it grow. And I feel like if we all play that part, you know, it'll be a lot easier. But yeah, definitely, it's definitely not an easy gig at all. Um, I eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff all the time. Okay. Hope you make more video tutorials so your subscribers can learn more nunchaku tricks. Yeah, man, I feel that, you know, I mean, I have, I think, about 800 videos maybe 600 online, but I do have over a thousand videos that I've uploaded to YouTube already for nunchuck tricks. But a lot of it's talking, so I think it's hard for people to sift through, which is why I made the database actually, that flow tricks database on the website that I showed earlier, was so it just cuts straight to the chase. You can go straight to the techniques. I'm always exploring and learning new moves. Um, so I think flow tricks will keep going, and even when I start to run out of ideas, I think I'm gonna start bringing in more instructors that teach different arts, because in the end, like, it's really good to be versatile, especially if you want to be a performer. It's good. If you learn if you learn four or five props and you get good at those, you can be a one-man show. You can sell yourself to birthday parties and all that good jazz. But if you can only do chucks, and I love chucks, but if you can only do chucks, it makes it a lot harder to sell yourself because you have to get other people if they want anything longer than a couple minutes. Like, no one wants to watch a nunchucker spin for 20 minutes at a birthday party. Like, I'm just saying, like, if you're trying to sell yourself, you know? Um, so it's always, it's always good. So my thought was always, in the long term, is to help people become performers by giving them lots of different props. And that's why we're flow tricks and not nunchaku tricks, actually, is because I want people to learn all kinds of props so they can go out and do one-man shows and, you know, maybe make a part-time or even full-time living doing this as well. All right. Will I be doing a martial arts month? Probably again. I'll probably do a martial arts month again. I just, you know, the thing I need more than anything is another person. I need someone to beat up. No one wants to volunteer, it's just... <laughs> I know floor arts can be hard, especially financially, but don't give up, Ken. So many people look up to you. Um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down over here. Hold on a second. Uh, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. I, it, really is, it really is a challenge. I'm gonna turn this down a hair. Hold on. It really is a great challenge, and I think a lot of it's just because it doesn't exist. What I what I want, what I want to see for flow arts does not exist in today's society yet, and it's because it's too new. But I also feel like I have the hope that 
even maybe maybe it's 10 years from now maybe it's five years from now but just keep pushing through i mean look at flow tricks we're at what 32,000 subscribers now i mean that's awesome and it's just because you stuck with it you know <laughs> so i'm hoping that if i just keep sticking with it maybe five ten years we're at 300,000 subscribers you know and maybe then by that time like so many more people will be open to it that there will be a lot more instructors that can do this full time. I don't know. I have big dreams, definitely. But I think that the website and everything that I'm building is kind of going that direction to help people to help people be able to make a part time or full time living is definitely one of my big goals is to be able to share that um, without as much struggle. I think that would be really amazing. Um, can you give good suggestions where I can buy good quality nunchucks online? I mean, I'm working with Dark Monk, and we've, like I said, we've worked on this rendition of nunchuck for a while. So I, I personally love these chucks, but they're not out yet. One thing you can always do, I really don't, I don't always like buying nunchucks online just because I don't know how it feels. Like I usually go to martial arts stores so I can pick up a pair of chucks and feel it because sometimes it looks great online and then you buy it. And it, the, the, the balance points off or it's too thick or it's, it just doesn't have the right padding. So I think that when you're buying online, if you really want to, you can, you can either, mm, the best thing to do really, in my opinion, is to find one locally. And if not, find someone that you respect. I guess that's what you're doing is asking me because that, but I mean, honestly, like I mostly just do fire nunchucks and then the dark monk nunchucks we've been working on for what like six months to get the formula right so i mean that's going to be an awesome chuck when it comes out otherwise just go to like century martial arts and uh, just take a stab at one of the chucks i've tried graphite chucks those are fun but they kind of leave bruises on the back of your hand there's speed chucks which i don't like i mean there's there's a bunch of different ones but stylistically what might work for you may not work for me because i really am not a speed chuck person but some people are amazing at it so um Let's see, how long have I been practicing nunchucks? Um, so I've been doing nunchaku for eight years uh, as, a, as a performance artist, as someone that does it f for fun. Um, probably six years full time, just that means I just do it all day, <laughs> you know, or I spin something. I mean, I, I do a lot of different things. I think I have about 12 different acts with about 10 different props that I use. I do sword, double sword double staff, single staff, chucks. So poi, there's in the sear wheel, there's there's a lot of things that I revolve around. So it's not just chucks anymore, which is again why we do flow tricks. But uh, I also studied it in martial arts for a few years as well, which is really funny because in martial arts, I was constantly corrected because you're supposed to hold chucks low because that's where the power is at. You create more force as you hold it low, but tricksters hold it high. So I was always holding it high because I liked, I was doing hand rolls even back in the old days, but I just didn't know that there's other stuff you could do. So that's all I was doing. Constantly corrected though by my instructors who are probably, if they watch my videos now, are like, oh my God, <laughs> pretty funny. Um, let's see here. Just like Bruce Lee, he had a hard time when he innovated martial arts, but now people look back and say he was ahead of his time. Thank you, man. Just like you and Flowtrix. Thank you, Lionel. I, I really appreciate that. I really hope, I really hope that's the case. I really hope that in the future, well, no matter what, the thing is, is there's people like, people like you are watching it now. So I know I'm doing something like I know it's working. Definitely like it, the scene has changed in the last five years since, you know, I started really, really actively teaching it. So I can only imagine where things will be like five, 10 years from now. All I know is I'm just working hard to keep building it because like if the opportunity comes and we're not ready for it, then it could pass us by. And maybe nunchuck fads will just hit it huge. Maybe if a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie comes out and we have like a month leeway to really get a bunch of people hooked on it before the Ninja Turtle craze dies and then all of a sudden we're back. And it's like, as long as we're ready when that happens, we can just grab a lot of people and keep them and hold them there and show them, hey man, there's a lot more than just, just what you see in the movies. There's so much you can do with chucks. So, you know, that's, that's the hope. Uh, the Dark Monk nunchucks is hopefully, they're doing a test run. Hopefully the test will be ready next week, by the way. Uh, keeping the fingers crossed. So we'll have to see. All right, so let me, I'm gonna check on one more thing here. If you're ready, we are going to do the Dark Monk Fire Nunchuck giveaway. So without further ado, I'm gonna bust open the internet. Zoop. Sorry, Kevin, we haven't spun the wheel yet. 
I'm gonna spin this wheel, and this has everyone that's donated on Patreon, of course, eight dollars and more. Everyone that's donated, and uh, basically, yeah, we're gonna spin it, and whoever's name comes up is gonna be the lucky winner. Here we go. I'm gonna hit it like a bunch of times, just to be annoying. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Here it comes. Who will it be? There it is. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try to pronounce that. Um, I know this guy, though. He's, he's awesome. I'll, I'll definitely talk to him and uh, let him know. Let me see here. E-J-O-R-N. Congratulations, you are the winner. I, I really want to try to pronounce it, but I, I really don't I don't know how on that one. Byo Rin? Anyways, uh, awesome, good job. You are the Fire Nunchuck winner. I will chat with you about that. Amazing. Okay, so with that said, I just want to thank everyone again uh, for watching this live stream. This, this is a pretty good live stream, right? We had quite a bit of things that happened. But yeah, I mean, I feel like the, the the status of where nunchucks are and where it's going is really exciting. I feel like we keep growing, nunchucks keeps growing, and the arts, like we keep expanding in terms of where were we five years ago compared to now, we've gone up so much. And I just, I can only see it going up more. And as you guys keep teaching more, I think, you know, like it's not just me, it's like a team effort. So as I pass the knowledge and other people pass the knowledge and then those people pass, it just spreads, you know, and it just catches on like a wildfire. And that's the hope. And when that comes, then all of a sudden we need to get some classes going, get local classes. My dream with Flow Tricks is actually to create a hub where we can have schools that teach this stuff all over the United States. That's my dream. Schools that teach it and also hubs for schools of performers so people can just go in and hire performers all over the United States. I think that that would be amazing. It'd be an amazing opportunity for performers as well as instructors. That's the big dream, but we've got to build it brick by brick, and that is the castle happy ending. <laughs> so, um, Lionel, I don't know what next month's uh, uh, giveaway is going to be yet. I'm going to go check it out, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, send a message to Bio Rin and let him know what happened. Hey, uh, thanks again, everyone. I really appreciate you watching the live stream, and I'm going to try again next Thursday, but until then, y'all take care. I am going to show also dun, 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 Patreon curtain calls. Really, I just want to send a shout out to all these people, Melissa, Dennis, Jason, Michael, Alvin, John, Mintaiko, Ninja Bacon, Jake Allen Brun, Jocelyn, and Cody. You guys, uh, you guys are the biggest supporters for Flow Tricks, and I just really appreciate it because that breathes life into all these projects and allows me to do things like this. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a great, great week, and I will catch up with you all soon.